I know, I'm abdicating my responsibility to talk about the most important scandal of the week. No, not whatever is going on at the Impeachment Circus Act. The scandal of Fartgate, whether or not Eric Swalwell in fact released a massive fart live on MSNBC. Taxpayer dollars to ask the Ukrainians to help them cheat an election. I'll discuss it more on Sunday, but this thing already trended number one on Twitter for hours, so I'm already late to the punchline. Sorry, please excuse my mug sliding across my desk there. But besides, there's an even bigger stain to discuss, that being the one on the reputation of a once important and principled American institution. I'm sure you've heard of the American Civil Liberties Union, a name built upon defending the rights of even the most hated people in society, defending the rights of actual Nazis to march in Skokie, for example. Now instead, apparently celebrating evidence-free accusations and the presumption of guilt over innocence, the ACLU gave Kavanaugh accuser Christine Blasey Ford its Courage Award on Monday night, presented by Judd Apatow. I guess Jussie Smollett wasn't available. What a shame. It would have been nice to see Courage awarding Courage. But we'll have to settle for something between comedy monologue and sincere confessional. Normally, I wouldn't necessarily care about this sort of introduction, but in this case, I think it's really insightful. Judd Apatow takes the podium to warm up the crowd with some lighthearted jokes, but all he reveals is an organization that has abandoned all principles but one. Orange man bad, we hate Trump, all else is secondary. How are you guys doing? It's hard, right? It's hard, it's stressful. It is, we are all stressed right now. You ever wake up in the middle of the night just screaming, Devin Nunes! <laughs> just been watching the hearings every day, Googling the history of Ukrainian government. Right now I have a closer relationship with Politico's Twitter feed than my own children. Is that actually a joke? Is that just an accurate statement of fact? You decide. I legitimately could believe this guy has clinical Trump derangement to the point that he actually neglects his children. But the point of the intended humor is absolutely revealing of the transformation of this organization. Instead of we stand up for civil liberties no matter who threatens them or who the president is, now it's we hate this president and our organizational purpose is to diminish him and ultimately remove him. And if civil liberties become an obstacle in that effort, so be it. Those are more of a secondary throwback for us these days anyway, though he does spend one moment pretending to care about this country's founding values. We have to teach our kids civics. Our kids don't know civics, right? They do not teach it well enough in school. They need to learn the Constitution. And Ooh, the Constitution, you say. Well, which parts should they learn specifically? The First Amendment's protections for what you call hate speech? How about the Second Amendment's protection against your subjectively sane gun control? Or maybe we can agree on a lesson about the presumption of innocence for the accused that the courts have interpreted as part of the due process clauses of the 5th and 14th amendments. No, of course not. We're just going to move right back to the real guiding principle here. You know it's a weird world where suddenly I believe in all the same things as Scaramucci. <laughs> suddenly Scaramucci is my guy? How did this happen? It's not weird at all. In fact, it's the logical end of hatred of Trump being the basis for your distinction between right and wrong. If hatred of Trump is your guide to the world, anyone who hates Trump is your guy. So how'd this happen? It happened the exact moment that Scaramucci started criticizing Trump. All other considerations are secondary because you have no values or principles otherwise. And you outright admit this, Judd. You acknowledge it's the primary organizing principle you hold. So many heroes have risen in the last few years. What Trump didn't realize that is that he did make America great. He made it great by uniting us all against him. That in speaking truth to power, Judd loves him some speaking truth to power, as long as that power is orange. I'm here uh, to give an award to a true American hero who spoke truth to power in an era where the president has lied 10,000 times. We need truth tellers, right? We need to honor the courageous people who stand up to power. If I stand up to power by saying Judd Apatow touches kids and I provide no evidence for that accusation, is that the sort of courageous truth telling you'd celebrate, Judd? If not, why not? Is it because evidence-free defamatory accusations should be presumed untrue? Or is it just because orange man bad 
and bearded man good. One stance is a principle of truth and justice. The other is just playing for a team no matter what they do, right or wrong. And that's a total betrayal of the ACLU's purpose and history. The ACLU wasn't founded to play for a team. The ACLU was founded to protect fair rules for all teams. It bears emphasis that other than that brief generic constitution reference, not one moment of this entire eight minute intro was dedicated to why protecting civil liberties matters or how Christine Blasey Ford protects them, but here she is to accept her award anyway. It's really great when women st step up for other women. And it's really great when men show up for women. Thank you, Judd. How about we all show up for principles instead of genitals, as though all women agree with you anyway, as though they aren't just as evenly split on your story as society at large. They are, the polling shows it. Ford says she was just doing her duty as a citizen. It was her responsibility to country and family that drove her to come forward. I was simply doing my duty as a citizen, providing information to the Senate that I believed would be relevant to the Supreme Court nomination process. I had a responsibility to my country, to my fellow citizens, to my students, to my children, to live the values that I try to teach them. Why did your sense of responsibility and duty suddenly emerge after Kavanaugh had already sat on a federal bench for 12 years? Why did your values only kick in after the orange man nominated him to the Supreme Court. Why was it totally okay for a supposed sexual abuser to sit on the appeals court for that long, but when he's nominated for Supreme Court by the guy that you are all admittedly here to hate, it's your one unifying principle, suddenly, then and only then, does your sense of duty tingle? Is it really a sense of loyalty to country, or is it just a sense of politics? I was not prepared for the venom, the persistent attacks, the vilification, the loss of personal privacy, and the collateral damage to my friends and my family. Oh, how the aggressor becomes the victim. You made life-ruining allegations against a person without corroborating evidence. You volunteered to try to ruin that life. If you have even a shred of evidence to support your claims, I'll understand why you did it, but you don't. It's a year later now, and we still have nothing but deranged story time from Tranny Garth and the corpse of Derek Zoolander. The ethical promise to sexual assault survivors survivors to do no further harm is easily ignored by journalists who selectively abstract meaningless details that are twisted and weaponized against me. There is a well-financed attack machine out there ready to flood the internet and the media anytime I raise my head. Who exactly are these media figures who were unfair to you? Was it the Washington Post who you handpicked to publish your unsubstantiated claims uncritically? Was it the New York Times or CNN or maybe some other outlet who happily published op-ed after op-ed fawning over your courage, the very same supposed courage for which you're being awarded right now? Who are these media adversaries? I'd ask you for evidence, but you know. And speaking of shady financial backing, since you're now taking a stance against that, I look forward to you finally answering questions about who's covering your costs to fund your own attack machine. Questions you haven't answered ever since your emergence more than a year ago. I also underestimated the love and the support that I have received. The loyalty of individuals who are willing and ready to stand up to the intense public scrutiny on my behalf, willing to provide corroborating information. Yet yeah, nobody did that. Nobody was willing to corroborate your claims. The FBI interviewed all your friends from high school. Not one corroborated your account. In fact, they didn't even recall such a party event ever happening. And your best friend, Leland Kaiser, who supposedly attended this make-believe event with you, says as of two months ago, quote, those facts together I don't recollect, and it just doesn't make any sense. She closes hoping to inspire the Blasey Fords of the future. And it's not just survivors that we have to stand up for. It's all of those who come forward to support our country. Ambassador Jovanovic, all of the men and women who bravely come forward. They come forward to tell the truth and to help our country. Yeah, except for 
when they don't. And that's why the protections of civil liberties are so important. They protect us from malicious actors, be they individuals or government forces. And they protect our society from decaying to the point that the credibility of an accusation is determined not by the evidence, but by whether we personally like the accuser or personally dislike the accused. That's not a recipe for civil liberties. That's a recipe for kangaroo courts, a total betrayal of everything the ACLU supposedly stands for. I can remember a time when depriving a man's liberty, or at least denying him freedom in his opportunity, threatening his livelihood and his reputation on flimsy or, in this case, non-existent evidence, would have been the calling of the ACLU to fight with everything it has. Now they applaud it as though this standard somehow makes anybody more free. I assure you, there is an authoritarian state far worse than the one you people preposterously believe Trump is running, and it's built upon the unprincipled foundation of the ends justifying the means that you're celebrating right now. The abandonment of principle to satisfy short-term whims isn't courage. It's foolishness. It's recklessness. It's saying that you winning today is all that matters, even if we all lose tomorrow as a consequence. Applaud that standard at your own peril. Thanks as always for listening and for supporting this channel always. Appreciate that thoughtful discussion down below and especially over on Twitter. That is at ML Christensen. You're always welcome to coming out and chatting my live streams. Those are linked down in the description. Looking forward to it. Goodbye.